Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks to everyone that came in in person, as well as everyone that is uh, following along on the interwebs. Uh, I, I'm filling in for my coworker, Ken, uh, for this speech. He could not make it. So uh, yeah, we will get through this. Uh, our presentation is called Beating Boudreaux, Measuring Success Against the Shift. Uh, I'd like to start out by introducing our titular, Lou Boudreaux. He was a bit of a uh, rapscallion in the uh, golden age of baseball. Uh, and in a game, he was a player coach for the Indians, 1946. They're playing the uh, Boston Red Sox, and Ted Williams was just killing them. Uh, <laughs> Going into the second at bat of the second game of a doubleheader, uh, Ted Williams was five for five with three homers and a double. So Boudreaux was willing to do anything he could to uh, try to slow that down. And uh, what he came up with was a defensive alignment that had only one player on the left side of the field, the left fielder, and everyone else was on the right side. Uh, Ted Williams, of course, laughed when he saw this defensive alignment. Uh, but the punchline is that the first at bat against that shift, uh, Ted Williams grounded out to player coach Lou Boudreaux, uh, which I think is kind of fun. Um, anyways, uh, for our study, we looked at a defensive shift against left handed hitters, uh, pole hitters, in which at least three of the infielders were on the right side of the field. Uh, there's several strategies that people think, uh, at least leading strategies that people think are effective at combating the shift. Uh, one is the three true outcome strategy. Uh, you can't really shift against home runs. Um, another one is bunts down the third baseline in which there is nobody home. Uh, and then there's also talk about banning it outright. Uh, our project at least will look at only balls that are put in play against the shift. Um, okay, so a, a metric or a, a term that we're going to introduce is called beats. Uh, and to say where we got our data from, we use minor league baseball field effects data from 2017 through 2019. Uh, we only looked at left-handed batters that faced at least one defensive alignment that had three uh, infielders on the right side of the field. Um, and then we compared their shifted balls in play profiles to their non-shifted balls in play profiles, uh, looking at bounded boxes with similar hit characteristics looking at exit velocity, launch angle, and spray angle. Uh, we only look for balls that are put in play, so no home runs or uh, strikeouts or even slugging percentage was calculated or uh, factored into this analysis. And uh, we also looked at the ratio of the batting average of balls in play. So when you see uh, histograms like this uh, with the red and the blue, that is the ratio of balls in play against the shift, or batting average on balls in play against the shift versus uh, a regular normal defensive alignment. Uh, if the number is greater than one, that would indicate a what we're calling a beat, um, which is a ball that is more likely to be hit against the shift than a normal defense. And if it's less than one, uh, that is a ball that the, uh, the shift is um, better set up to defend, and it's obviously less successful against the shift than a normal defense. Okay, so here is a beat box visualization. I'm going to play the video. Uh, so as you can see, it um, normalized all contact location at a, a similar origin point. And then the distance out that the dot uh, is represents the exit velocity. And then the spray and launch angle is uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, so I will let this uh, play through. Um, and as you can see, when you take a look at it, even for the first time, uh, there are definitely some distinct uh, regions that are more successful against the shift than against a regular uh, defense. I think that was a uh, cool initial finding with our research, uh, was that it, it, there's not one area that on a ball in play you're always more likely to uh, beat the shift. Um, there's definitely, uh, as we see overhead, um, a bit of a uh, bias kind of, or a, a successful uh, line of balls in play towards that left center field slash shortstop uh, area, as you can see uh, with those balls. Um, but then there were a couple of other uh, locations I think worth highlighting. Uh, one is this lower uh, red location on the bottom left here, uh, which those are probably like bunts, um, as mentioned, as one of the strategies uh, as far as beating the shift. Um, and then there was also a very interesting uh, collection of red dots. Um, you can kind of see them uh, going towards the first base side. Uh, we suspect these are either drag bunts or as uh, my brother Riley is fond of calling them, swunts. 
uh, in which a player unintentionally bunted a ball uh, as a drag bunt would be um, to a left-handed hitter. Um, another way that we were able to look at this data is um, at the contact point. So this would be something that a coach or an organization could tell a player, hey, if you're facing a shift, you should look for pitches in uh, this zone or this tunnel. Uh, we created a three by three by three array, um, same color scheme where blue uh, represents balls that are put in play that are less effective against the shift than a normal defense, and red is uh, balls in play that are more effective against a shift than a regular defense. As you can see, there's no red uh, in any of the boxes, and that is because the shift works uh, by and large. Um, but as it uh, rotates around, um, you can see that on the outer half of the plate, it's uh, whiter, or at least like lighter blue. So these are pitches that a uh, batter, if he puts it in play, when the pitch is there, he is about as likely to get a hit against the shift or not against the shift. Uh, so this would be a good teaching tool for both players or both batters and pitchers. Um, a, a pitcher might sequence and try to mix in more inside pitches, uh, whereas a batter might try to uh, find a pitch away that he knows that he can um, drive and hopefully uh, beat the shift at least at the best rate possible. Uh, okay, this next graphic that we are going to look at is um, a series of bounded uh, launch angle and then the spray and exit velocity are the, the independent variables in these. Uh, so this, for every 10 degrees of launch angle we have a new uh, chart even though for the tails of uh, this graphic they're pretty similar. Uh, so these super low launch angles um, tend to be all uh, in the blue. Uh, which means that if you, if you pound a ball into the ground, uh, you're basically just as likely to get a hit whether it's a shift or not a shift. Uh, this makes sense logically as, uh, you know, it gives the defense a lot of time to react. They're not at the mercy of their over-defended, uh, you know, situation. Um, but then where this uh, type of analysis gets interesting is as you get closer to a uh, launch angle of zero, so here's the first time where you see that there are certain balls in play that uh, actually have positive or greater than one beat values. Uh, this graph is kind of interesting um, in that it has a bimodal, uh, or this histogram has a bimodal distribution, uh, which is, makes sense. Uh, a ball hit at this angle is a pretty sharp ground ball. And so if you hit it into the shift, uh, you're, you know, that part of the field is over defended. So they are more likely to, uh, turn that into an out as opposed to if you hit it the other way, that is less likely uh, to be converted into an out. This is the gamble that teams are making uh, when they implement a shift uh, on a batter. They're selling out to say, hey, look, we think you're more likely to put this certain ball in play and we're willing to live with the consequences of having an under-defended uh, part of the field and at balls hit at this launch angle, that is definitely a smart bet. Uh, as the launch angle goes up into more of a uh, line drive, uh, you see some balls reaching the outfield uh, on their uh, landing locations. Um, you see that there are actually uh, an even greater number of um, balls in the red or uh, uh, beat boxes in the red, I should say. Um, this sort of makes sense. These are hard hit balls. The defense is at the mercy of its current alignment. They don't have any uh, ability to react or, you know, run over and field the ground ball or camp out under a fly ball. Um, and then as we start approaching the kind of more line drive uh, launch angles, we start to see a really clear uh, red zone in left center field. Uh, obviously, you still get the same kind of red zone on the left half of the infield here. Those would be little uh, bloopers or squibbers, but uh, balls in left center field, pretty well struck at this angle. And so it is very interesting to see this uh, red pattern emerge. Uh, we're not really sure why 100% um, this would be an area for further research, uh, but we do believe that teams are shifting their outfield along with their infield. Uh, but like I said, we didn't um, directly look into that. Uh, and then as you go on, um, again, the same sort of trends emerge. Left side of the infield, a lot of red. Left center field, a lot of red. Uh, and then I think it's also interesting here to look at the histogram because you see there are almost as many red zones as blue zones. So balls hit in this kind of 10 to 30 
uh, or 20 to 30 here, but um, 10 to 30 launch angle uh, have a lot of beat boxes. And then um, as we kind of come off the, uh, the hot zone of uh, balls in play that hitters can really take advantage of against the shift, uh, we start to see the, um, the histogram uh, converge around one, although here you still have uh, some pretty clear red and blue areas uh, that are in line with the previous uh, launch angle range. Okay, and now as we get into the pop fly territory, uh, you can definitely see a peak emerging around one. Um, these are balls that the defense is not at the mercy of their initial position. They have plenty of time to run under a, uh, a pop fly, and so the shift um, is sort of uh, irrelevant towards this type of batted ball profile. And then as we see, we get into the extreme pop flies, it basically everything turns into white. Balls hit at a 60 to 70 degree launch angle are all, pretty much always gonna be turned into outs, uh, whether or not there's a shift involved. Um, another way that we uh, thought to slice up this data would be to look at individual players and see how they uh, particularly adjust to the shift. Um, by and large, the players that were shifted against uh, were the right players to shift against in that they had a batted ball profile that was vulnerable towards shifts um, with a mean average beat value of 0.847. Uh, we would like to highlight three players, uh, two of which we will name and one of which we will not for obvious reasons, uh, uh, that had interesting strategies against the shift that I think teams could learn from or try to emulate their strategies. Uh, this first player, player A, has a hot contact zone. Uh, that was that first uh, graph I showed you, that first uh, visual, uh, where he is hitting balls on the outer half of the plate. Among our sample, he had the most negative X average contact location, uh, which was a really sm smart strategy to have against the shift. Um, and as you can see, his beat value was very high relative to his peers, uh, even though he was shifted on about a third of the time. Um, as you can see from his landing location chart, uh, he has a lot of balls in the red and kind of white zones. Um, and so this approach of hitting pitches that he knows that he can drive the other way uh, against the shift is uh, clearly working out for him. Here is that beat box visualization for this batter. Uh, there are little black dots and uh, black dots with green uh, outlines represent balls that he put in play against the shift. Black dots without green outlines represent uh, balls that he put in play against a normal defense. So as you can see, he does a good job of avoiding uh, balls in play that are in the blue zones, and instead, a lot of his balls in play against shift are in the white or even a couple in the red zones. Uh, again, this is a smart strategy that this player has adopted uh, for hitting against the shift as far as only swing at and putting balls in play, uh, pitches that he knows that he can drive the other way or uh, you know, find some of these beat box zones. Uh, okay, player B has a good situational beat value. So his um, natural uh, balls in play, the ones that he puts in play against a normal defense, uh, have a beat value without a shift of 0.87. Uh, but then when they shift against him, some, he makes some sort of an adjustment uh, that allows him to hit uh, with a beat value of 0.913. Uh, so we're not really sure exactly what adjustments this player is making, but since he faces the shift in about half of his at-bats in our sample, uh, we assume that he has a, uh, some sort of adjustment that he's making, and he's clearly... Uh, so while he's the type of player that is susceptible to the shift, he makes a, uh, an adjustment when the shift happens that mitigates that uh, vulnerability uh, relative to his peers, which is definitely a smart approach. Here is his beatbox visualization. Um, and you can see he has almost no balls in play with a green dot in blue zones. Um, and again, this shows that he is able to make some sort of an adjustment. Uh, he recognizes the adjustment that the defense made and made a counter adjustment uh, that has proven to be very effective at uh, handling the shift, which he faces uh, quite a bit. He's a smart player, and that is a very smart adjustment to make. And then finally, our unnamed player, player X, he uh, only faced a shift about a quarter of the time in our uh, sample. Um, and without a, 
a shift on him, he has a beat value of 0.819, which again indicates that teams should probably shift against him. Uh, but then when they do shift against him, he has a batted ball profile that's even more vulnerable uh, to the shift, which is interesting to look at. And so we're not 100% um, sure what uh, goes into this. It could be uh, effective pitch sequencing. Um, it could just get in his head, uh, the, the shift. Um, but for whatever reason, he is a player that's already pretty vulnerable to the shift. Um, but then when the shift happens, he turns into a player that's even more vulnerable against the shift. So as we look at his visualization, um, you can definitely see a lot of these uh, green dots. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Uh, you can see a lot of the green dots are in the blue zones, uh, especially against the shift. So that is uh, a player that is vulnerable to the shift, um, just like I said, in, in general. But uh, once the shift is on, he is even more prone to a batted ball profile that uh, the shift is successful against. So the two players uh, that were successful and made good adjustments against the shift were uh, Kiebert Ruiz and Rowdy Telez. Uh, we thought we would highlight these guys that were able to make uh, smart, heady adjustments against the shift um, and showed uh, a good situational awareness uh, when facing this new, uh, you know, defense. Okay, in conclusion, uh, as we looked at the first uh, graphic, there was no one beat box. There were several uh, types of balls in play that you can hit that have success against the shift. Uh, some of them are at the lower launch angle uh, in specific regions, such as uh, drag bunts or push bunts, and some of them in that kind of higher uh, angle that led to uh, balls in that left center field gap. Uh, many of those probably turned into extra base hits, although, again, we didn't uh, factor in slugging percentage. Um, we think that with an analysis like this, there's a lot of takeaways that a team and a player could uh, make from this. Uh, pitchers, as far as sequencing and setting up pitch uh, batters for certain pitches that when they put in play are more likely to get hit into the shift, uh, as well as batters looking for mistake pitches maybe on the outer half of the plate. Uh, that they're able to do some damage against, uh, uh, against the shift. Uh, and then also batters were a lot more successful in that 10 to 30 degree kind of line drive launch angle, which makes sense because, again, uh, at that point you're forcing the defense to kind of own the vulnerabilities that they, they establish by uh, having an overshifted defense and under defending uh, one part of the field. Um, and then, the, like I said, the part that we would like to follow up on was why there was such a red zone in that kind of center field, left center field area. Um, that would be a source of future research. Uh, a couple thank yous. Uh, our graphics team at SMT, Richard and Jason, uh, they did a great job with the visualizations and all of our clients were very appreciative of the clients that let us use this research or do research like this on their data uh, for the betterment of the public uh, data field. Um, and then also, Saber, thanks for having us and letting us speak, even though these are, some un these are some unsure times. So I appreciate that. And I think I'm opening it up to questions. Did you look into any count effects to see if kind of like the pitchers or the, the hitters were kind of like working into better counts against the shift when they were being more patient? As we know that you get like, yeah. you get a better uh, averages at 03 and 0 than you do at 0 and 2. Uh, we did not look into specific count effects. And I do know that certain teams, uh, we were actually just talking about this outside, but certain teams will shift differently in different parts of the count. We did not factor that into our uh, analysis, but that would be an interesting thing to look at moving forward.